All right, I did that. We made it happen. Uh, good evening. This is the March 10th, 2022 uh, meeting of the New Canaan Parking Commission. So I'd like to welcome everybody. Um, hold on, I gotta pull up the agenda. I, I pulled it down for a sec. Uh, welcome everybody. It looks like we've got some pellets on the, the phone. So we will get through um, quickly. Uh, we need to, did we send out the minutes? Oh, did I do that? The draft of uh, the minutes? My, I might yes. not have done that. So I will send that in next week, uh, next month, we'll approve both minutes. That's my bad, that's on me, all this process stuff. Um, other than that, all right, we have three appellates here. I'm just gonna read down the list, which uh, I think is alphabetical, Mary, uh, possibly. All right, and I'm gonna apologize, Mary Chegwidden. Is Mary Chegwidden here? Yes. Okay, I, hi, how are that you? Was correct. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, why don't you, uh, we, we have your appeal, we have the pictures. So why don't you uh, give us your case? Oh, um, so I was actually, uh, I forget the exact street at this point, but um, I was just parked, um, you know, five minutes to go ahead and deliver to a client, DB Fine Wines. Um, I just, I had some heavy box, boxes because it was some um, marketing materials and some, just some heavy papers. Um, so I just wanted to drop it off to them quickly. And then, uh, yep, just bad luck and timing. So I want to see if there was anything you guys could help me out with. Um, commissioners, does anyone have any questions? No? Nope. You know, there is a, you know, there's a whole parking lot right next to DB Fine Wines there. And I know you had some materials, um, but, you know, there, there, there was definitely another option for you there. And, you know, it's unfortunate about the timing, but um, all right. Is there anything else you want to share with us? Uh, nope, I, I, and I totally understand and I apologize. It was really just no, because no, it was heavy, you know, heavy stuff. Yeah, it's an honest mistake. Um, the way we work is that we listen to all appeals uh, and then at the end of the meeting, we, we deliberate on them uh, as a whole. So you're more than welcome to sit on uh, but you can hop off. It doesn't matter either way if you stay on or stay off. Uh, and Stacy will notify you in the morning. Okay, perfect. Thank All right. you very much. Thank you. Bye. All right, N next up, uh, who do we have next up? Alexander uh, Gill. Alexander Gill. Is Alexander here? He's muted. Oh, you're He's muted. Talking. You're muted. You're muted. There we go. Okay, my name is Diego. I'm Representative Alexander for I'm um, his supervisor. He's not able to be in the meeting right now because he has to work. Well, um, we as a company, we deliver all over New Canaan. And he, according to him, he got out the truck to see if the account was open. It was on Elm Street, I believe. And I'm just wondering if it can do something about it because I mean it's kind of hard to park a big truck when you can. Since there's yeah, we, a little lack of uh, loading zones. Yeah, we have. There's a big loading zone not too far from there, right where South Avenue and Elm uh, Avenue intersect. It's an all-day loading zone. For the gas uh, station. Uh, before the gas station. Okay. So, and that's, it's a whole, a whole side of the street there uh, and it's dedicated all day long, 10 to three for loading. It's a little further than where you were. Um, so uh, anybody else have any questions? Any other comments, thoughts? Okay, uh, same thing as before, you're more than welcome to stay on. We'll, we'll deliberate these all uh, at once at the end and Stacy will reach out to you. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate All right, thank you. All right, next up, Stacy is, I don't know if we have- Courtney. I think, that... uh, I think she said she wasn't going to be able to make it, but uh, that's, I thought that's what she told me, but just in case that she's the last one, Courtney. Yep, and it was also in the handicapped zone. It's correct. the exact same one, correct? 
Um, yes. Right? Is it yes. Right at the yep. one at the end of Elm Street. Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, anyone have any thoughts on that? <clears throat> um, I don't have it in front of me. Uh, I'll wait till we discuss the others. Okay. Um, okay. This will be a quick meeting. In terms of old matters, I committed to do a little homework for you guys. Um, the week after we met, uh, in regards to Dr. Vitoli's uh, residential parking permit needs, uh, I had a conversation with Steve Carl, the head of planning, uh, excuse me, town council, and he was the former head of ordinance. I asked him what the process looked like, you know, pretty arduous. Uh, especially to get an enormous ordinance like that overturned. I also called four private business owners within walking distance uh, of that location. None of them wanted to accept. Uh, Stacy had made a call uh, and then Tucker had made a call to the owner, the now owner of the telephone lot. Uh, and he was willing to provide a permit. Um, uh, up and until if and until his project gets approved, but it was definitely a solution. Uh, Tucker and Stacy, I believe, were you on the call when you spoke to uh, Dr. Fatoli again, or was that just Tucker? No, that was I was there too. Okay, and she on the phone did not seem happy about it. Um, I sent her a letter, you know, telling her if she wanted to go to the ordinance committee to start with. Uh, uh, Steve Carl, uh, Jen, I think I CC'd you on that. Um, and we never heard from her again. So she must have somehow solved the problem uh, because if she hadn't, I think she would still keep calling. Um, so I don't know exactly what happened, but we did follow up um, and you know, really worked on her behalf to try to find a private parking space. And the telephone owner of the telephone lot was interested you know, in talking to her. So we haven't heard anything. Uh, I don't know if it's like, I think with my sons who are in their twenties, no news is good news, but uh, I'll let you know if we do hear anything else. Um, then the other thing I said I would look into was we've had a couple times where a police officer has written a ticket and it gets appealed. And it's difficult because we don't have the photographic ev evidence. So I did uh, have an exchange with Deputy Chief De Federico. He and Stacy had told me this would probably be the case. He did not want his officers using their personal phones to take pictures, but he did say they have body camera, uh, you know, the body cameras, and then they also have cameras in their car. So we requested that if they could, if it's possible to take a picture, to please do that. Um, new matters. Wait, Mark. Um, can you hold on one? Can you hold on yeah, one yeah. second? I left my I left my dog I left my dog outside. Just hold on. Okay, one go second. get your dog. Because <laughs> go I got your dog. Oh, I got it. It's cold out, uh, for sure. And Sarah, Laura, was there an agenda sent around, or am I the only yeah, one? Yeah, Stacy sent yeah. it around today. Just and funny. the um. The agenda it was at 10:53. Uh, she sent it. The, the other thing, guys, and I'm just learned this too. On the town website, the newcanaan.info, every meeting is posted, and the if there's a Zoom link, it's in. You know, there's like a calendar, and you know whatever meeting is happening uh, that night has the link too. probably get a permanent uh zoom link too you know dedicated to us yeah and it's that's always a good point i will ask pam about that uh you know if, if we can do that so we just have the same one every time and we can just bookmark it hmm. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Um, so do you guys have any thoughts or anything on either one of the our two old matter issues? 
No? Okay. Uh, and then in terms of new matters, one of the old matters we had talked about some of the difficulties, especially on Main Street um, with the markings and all that. And I did have a conversation with Tiger. Tiger was gonna try to be here tonight. He wanted to kind of bring us up to speed and talk about some of the projects, but he's uh, on the conservation uh, commission meeting. So we're gonna book him for next week or uh, next month or the month after. Um, we started talking about Main Street. Main Street's gonna get a big overhaul uh, because the state is after us, the town to comply with the 25 foot spacing around the uh, crosswalks like we had to do on Elm. You know, the streets are the police commission's purview. Um, but I, I uh, so that's, there's gonna be a lot of changes and he's thinking of ways to maximize the spaces and all that. So that's that's still in the works. They've got some plans on there. Obviously, you know, when the road gets restriped, that'll all happen. Um, so I did want to follow up with you on that. And then i had had some conversations and I wanted to get your thoughts. Well, once again, it is a police commission matter, but I, uh, the police commission meets in a couple of weeks and I, I'd, I want to talk a little bit about loading zones. So I said to Stacy, where are all the loading zones? And I thought she was going to come back with a list of 10 of them. Um, and they're actually... There's two all day loading zones. The one I just referenced where South and Elm meet on the west side of that street, kind of across from uh, that, uh, the agency, that new uh, real estate company, that whole side of the block is an all day loading zone. There's one on Berta Street, that's another all day one. And the parking officers say that's pretty busy. Then we have three other loading zones the one on Main Street, uh, which has gotten a lot of discussion lately because Greenology has gone to the police commission multiple times because his um, drivers are getting ticketed and it's very crunched over there. There's a handicap zone, there's fire hydrant, there's a loading zone that's 10 to 7 to 10 a.m. Then there's one on Forest Street, right past the diner, uh, adjacent to that little pocket park that's seven to 10, I think. No, uh, and then, or excuse me, I'm sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, yeah. The forest in Maine is seven to 11. Seven to 11, okay. And, the and then the Elm Street one is seven to 10. Yeah, so right. that's in front of uh, Brotherhood and Higley there. So I looked at the, what the ordinance is for loading zones and it's actually, it doesn't say specifically, it's very vague, the wording, it's not, um, it doesn't say what type of vehicle it has to be. It doesn't say a time length. So I'm wondering, and once again, this is a police commission decision, if it's to take those three, Forest, Maine and Elm and turn those into all day 15 minute spots, sort of like in Morse Court. Um, I think it's easier to patrol for the officers. You know, you get 15 minutes and whether you're running in to pick up a bottle of wine or uh, an Uber Eats driver is picking up something at Chicken Joe's or whatever, it, it may help ease some flexibility. And I think a lot of people get so frustrated driving down Elm Street finding to find a space, especially when they know they're literally doing a run in, run out errand. So, you know, Tiger's gonna have, you know, we're gonna have those bump outs on Elm Street that'll happen this spring. I think it would all happen then, but I, I'd like to open up that discussion with police commission. I don't know if you guys think, you know, from a, you know, resident perspective, uh, if that could be something that could ease some of the, the tension and create some fluidity on the streets. Sounds good to me. Yeah, I think that's an excellent idea. That's the bare minimum we should be doing and we should be creating more loading zones uh, generally, because I think the goal should be to ease commerce and get what the stores need, not what the customers need who have other options to go park and walk you know yeah if so, you've ever well, driven a truck for a living it's a nightmare you don't <laughs> have you, you don't just to make deliveries between 7 and 11 you've got a no. you've, you've got a, a long list all day and so but what happens just get in and get out when you know then the loading guy comes along in his big truck and there's some you know resident or shopper or somebody else there 
they have to drive around for 15 minutes? Well, I mean, I, I think the concept is that anybody can use those spaces to do quick errands. You know, it's been successful over on Morse Court because it gives people flexibility, you know, to, to run to the gas station, run to the bagel store, uh, run into the health food store. Um, and it's also easier to monitor. And it's, I, I think to Drew's point, it, it, it could be helpful for, uh, you know, trucks and delivery guys. And it could also be helpful for customers and businesses loading in and loading out. So I don't know what the police commission will think, but in terms of, you know, creating, we're just trying to create as many options downtown. There's so many different people in town, as Drew said, delivering business deliveries, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the DoorDash, Uber Eats types, the residents, the, the workers, you know, uh, real estate agents coming in and out. Um, and we're just trying to give as many options to people as possible. And I think people get frustrated that they've got to go around park, pay to do it, that it takes longer to park, pay, walk than it does, does to actually do the, um, to do the errand. So I, I think know, it's just a great a idea. I think we should try it. Yeah. Officer Defeder or uh, uh, Deputy Chief De Federico, you know, was was interested in the concept too. Um, so I'm going to ask request to be on the uh, parking uh, police commission agenda on the 16th and bring it up. I, I don't think they'll make a final decision. I think I think once I think a lot of changes are going to happen with Main Street and Elm Street with the bump outs, and so we'd, we'd probably try to you know. They would they would probably want to do it all at once. You know, once again, that's that's their decision. Um, but in terms of trying to adapt our, you know, downtown infrastructure that was set up in the mid nineteenth century uh, to twenty second century, uh, you know, uh, living and commerce and all the rest. Um, I have a question on the uh, the Main Street repavement. Um, yeah, I know there's a lot going on in with, with that project but were you able to get any information on what the handicap stripes would look like you know I, the I think same? there's a there's a code and I, I figured I'd want to mm -hmm. look at it all at once it would be very yeah. well marked it'll be you know it'll be a solid blue box and then uh, on the street uh, as well uh, that's my understanding and he's talking about the possibility you know there's two handicap spots on that side of the street one there kind of in front of New Canaan Music and one down the fire. And he's thinking maybe to move one of those over in front of Tolly, the old Tolly, because really for accessibility, it allows people coming from both directions that may need that spot to, to pull right in there. Um, and then, you know, so that plan is in the works. Uh, I think it's gonna be pretty complicated. They have some drafts that, you know, I haven't seen or anything yet, but you know, it will be, you know, so that's a state road, which makes it even more complicated because it, it has to go through, um, you know, it's our DPW, but it's the state has got to approve anything that happens there. So my question about the right in front of Tolly is that that's a pretty funky curve mm -hmm. and it's really hard to p parallel park into that into that space if you're a completely well-equipped driver. And if you're a handicapped yep. driver, I would imagine it, it might be more tricky. So I, yeah. I would think that put it further up more in front of town hall might yep. be a better bet. Okay, yeah, no, I think that, you know, like everything in municipal government, it gets studied and, and you know, experts weigh in and all that. But I think that's a good point, especially because of that private driveway coming out from behind the People's Bank. From so, People's Bank, right? Yeah. That's that can be tricky, and then you've got a lot of people with the light there. It's you know, yeah, no, it's a lot. It's a busy section of town, you know, with East Avenue coming in and all that. Um, Laura, okay. uh, Laura, yes. question: Is there yes. uh, when they restripe for handicap on Main? Is there any ability or thought to do it on Elm also in that spot where we we're looking at two tickets today? <sighs> Yeah, I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I, I think, you know, if, if they get worn down, they 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 get re, redone. And I don't know what's on DPW's agenda. Um, you know, those guys. They, so that that's a good question. We can always go out. Uh, we have helped in the past. We can always go out and um, restripe it in blue. Unfortunately, with the weather, the salt, and 
the snow plowing, it, it has a tendency to take the uh, paint off of the lines, but we can go out once the weather gets a little bit better, we can go out and line it a little bit better in blue. To, the one uh, right there on, on Elm. On the corner of Elm in Maine, yes. Yeah. Because yeah. So. I was wondering if you were saying that the new ones, like the whole box is blue, like the whole entire ground, because you know people are saying, I guess, in, you know, in some of these um, appeals that they can't, I mean, the sign is there, I, you know, I'm, I'm reading the appeals, you know, that they can't see the stripe on the ground. If right. we could make that whole box blue, would that make it any easier, you know, on Elm also? I, think. I can also talk, talk to Tiger and see how we could do the striping besides just the outline as well. Maybe a decal we can put down. Yeah. Again, it will, we have to just wait for the weather to get a little bit warmer, but there shouldn't be an okay. issue. Um. All right. Why don't uh, anything else on that? Uh, Stacy, you want to give us an update from the parking department? Sure. Just a few things to share. Um, in regards to the commuter lots, there is an uptick in people renewing or uh, reinstating their permits. Um, since the mandates have changed a little bit, I'm seeing people calling in or emailing me that they want to reinstate the permit because they're going back to work at least a few days a week. So I'm saying I'm getting about between one and two, at least one and two per day. Uh, also getting some new requests for new permits in Talmadge Hill. The people that moved in during the pandemic and were not commuting yet now seem to be going back into Manhattan as well. So there's been a little bit of an uptick in requests for town and chill permits. So things are slowly, you know, turning. So just keep an eye on it. The lots by no means are full at all, but um, we are seeing um, the amount of cars parked there increasing. Uh, so I just want to let you know that uh, I am still moving down on the Lumberyard wait list. Uh, currently out of the 197 people that I've called, uh, 54 have taken a permit, 86 uh, chose to remain on that priority list, 10 said no, and uh, there was a total of 47 that I have not gotten a response to. Um, 25 of those were emailed twice and called and still no response. So. I can't do any more. 22 will be getting a second email and a call. Um, so, and then we're gonna move down another 46 on that list till I get a hundred. Um, next, just to give some of our new commission members a little idea of how we're moving forward with permits. We're approaching the business permit renewal period. That usually happens around the end of May, beginning of June for a July 1st start. Um, the business permits usually go July 1st through June 30th. Um, those are the premium business permits. The center school and the locust have been on a six month basis and they are also expiring this year on June 30th too. So around May, beginning of June, we will start with our renewals going out to those premium business permits and as well as the free permits for the center and locust lot if we continue with that program. Currently, the premium permits in Morse Court, we have the full amount out, 36. Park Street, we have the 60 out plus 26 along the wall. And telephone, we have 21 out. Um, and then the commuter permits, just for information, um, those will renew late July, beginning of August for a September 1st start. And last, just to let everybody know, um, my current software provider who provides the software program for my permits and the tickets and enforcement, they're doing an upgrade to the software system and they're gonna go live on March 14th. Um, right now, um, we're gonna probably start with the learning curve uh, to get used to the whole new system. But I think in the long run, from what I'm seeing now, it's gonna be beneficial for everyone involved, our department, as well as um, commuter permit holders and business permit holders, because moving forward, 
We've always been able to renew permits online, but moving forward, this new program will allow new permit holders to apply for a permit online. So they don't have to come in, they don't have to email me, they can just go online, apply for the permit, they can send me all their documentations, I will get it through an email, I will look it over, if everything is good to go, I will approve it, they will get an email back and then they will be able to pay for their permit online that way too. So I think that's the direction the town has wanted to go in. So it looks like we are gonna start going in that direction. Um, like I said, it's going to be a learning curve. It's gonna be a learning curve on the enforcement end of it also. But um, from everything I see, I think once we get to know the program and work with it, it should be, should be good. Um, that's not to say that if we're not happy with it, we have a contract, but the contract renews every year. And as long as we give them, I believe it's a 90 day heads up that we are gonna start looking elsewhere. Um, you know, we can always change our mind and, and look to see if there's something better for the town. But right now um, we've been with this company and they've merged with another company. So um, I think it's beneficial to give them a try first since we're an old time customer of the original provider. All right, so good. I yeah, I think people will appreciate being able to apply uh, online and just upload the documents and all that. Yep. Um, in terms of the business permits, which we've been renewing on a, or at least the, the free permits in Locust and Center, I mm -hmm. guess next month we should vote if we're gonna continue that program. I, I don't see why we wouldn't. So uh, then that gives you the ability. Do you think, let's, I mean, have a discussion here. Do you think, that we should go to a year long program or, or do we see a lot of turnover in employees that, you, you know what I'm saying? Is it, is it smarter to do it every six months because there's a lot of employee turnover for those three so we can clean out the system or what do you think? Or do, or do, or do you think a year would be all right? I, I, don't, I have no opinion. I, I, I think uh, to keep things uh, simple and I think for the employees as well, because the employees that are renewing are missing sometimes that six month period. So they don't either get the renewal, they miss it, they're not aware that they have to do it every six months. Um, that I think going to a year would um, work better. If, if employees change, a lot of the businesses will notify me and say, could we transfer that permit or I've, I've lost this employee, can I get another permit for this employee? And so we weed the, the old employees or the employees that left out anyway of the system. Okay. So All right. We can talk about that more next week, but I wanted to, we can think sure. about that and, and we'll vote uh, and go from there, uh, April uh employee i'm just writing a note to myself permits and on that note though i will have to say that that program is um it, people love it um the employees that are utilizing it are very happy with it so it's it's something that should be kept okay no i'm 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 very very proud that we have that program Yes, I think it's a huge benefit, especially for hourly workers, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, you know, hopefully, you know, the ones that are taking advantage of it, then are not parking in the close lots and the and the streets, uh, which yeah. is better for everybody. Um, all right. Thank you, Stacy. That was very good. Yeah. All right. So I guess we need to go back and vote on the three appeals. Um, I'll start. I'll go down the list again. Mary. Uh, Chegwigan, does anyone have any thoughts on that? That's the woman who is in front of the hydrant. Does everyone know that location? It's right in front of Swirl and there's the wine shop right there. Pretty obvious that there's a hydrant right. there. I right. mean, and then it was in broad daylight, so. Right. Well, um, I, actually, I actually would disagree. I mean, I'm not used to uh, as used to, you know, driving in Connecticut where the hydrant isn't right on the sidewalk. There's no yellow paint on the curb 
I mean, look, mm. there was a lot, no question. Um, if I looked at the the, the uh, photo correctly, there was no paint on the actual curb itself. I mean, she was parked in a striping thing. Look, I'm just going to say it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a protest vote and appeal all of these until we get new striping on all the streets. And it you can have the leadership okay. send a message to the leadership that if we're going to have streets that are just sort of willy nilly yeah. marked and and charge people for not upkeeping the streets, I'm not going to be a part of that. So excuse me, go. Drew, but if you look in that third picture, yeah, um, there's a yellow line right there. Sign, there is a very clear yellow line. I, I, I can't get my email in front of me so okay but well it's lying very clearly just yeah it, it, if you look at the if it, it's picture number three uh oh yeah at, uh, right you can there. see the yellow line and there's a no parking Parkins. and there's the hydrant so um all right well let's vote uh who votes to uphold the ticket but that means that we're going to charge them, right? That's, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. So that is four to one. All right. Uh, next is Alexander Gill. And there was a note from the officer on this that this same truck had been told not to park there the day before. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's vote. Who votes to uphold? Well, I, I just, just one question yep. there. So, yep. so did the person giving the ticket, our officer, just sit in their car, and or did they confront the person again and say, "I told you yesterday," you know, either move or I mean, was there another interaction or was it, you know? Well, hold on. Her... Let me, let's pull it up. It says the officers note this individual was asked not to park in the handicap space and to and but to they could double park and they said the previous day when making a delivery so she offered him an option right well it just wasn't clear if that was the day before or the same day the, the so this was. individual was asked not to park in the handicap space and to double park the the previous day so the right. day before so this is the second day in a row so he, second it, time he's doing it. So he already got a free pass is basically. Correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, mean, I, I guess there just wasn't, maybe there wasn't a second confrontation. Like I see you <laughs> day number two. Anyway, whatever. It, it doesn't change the outcome. Uh, um, just want to give people the benefit of the doubt or, you know, again, are we in the, we, we need to write tickets business or are we into like getting them off the street? So if it was me and I was in the car and there, there was a second time, I would say, I see you there, either move right now or I'm writing the ticket, you know, give them the second chance. I think it was pretty nice. She gave him the first chance. Yeah, it, it, because especially because it's the handicapped. I think we have. Yeah, but I mean, I, again, I mean, I, I I come at it from like who's using our facilities. Like, uh, truck drivers don't care about like whether we have enough handicapped parking. They're like they're trying to unload to a business, and you're not going to walk halfway down the block to carry a bunch of stuff. Well, they generally and, have a hand truck. So, okay. but how would you feel if if your if your mobility is impaired and and you're looking for a space? Right. I well, mean, that's, yeah. that's who no, we're that, thinking. That, of. that, that, that's, that's true. But the point is, as you described earlier in the meeting, we don't have enough loading zones and they're, they're not convenient. So I don't think he's thinking about who he's going to insult where he parks. He's just trying to park where he can get his job done and get out of there. And well, we're not I making it easy for anybody and handicap people, you know, the same way. It's just it's just kind of a mess. And I think um, that I'm the frequent gonna... delivery people know that there's yeah. this unwritten rule that double parking is kind of an OK thing. And in fact, yeah, this officer had yes. had suggested that that's what he ought to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, they come around the corner and that space is right there. And I'm sure it's tempting. Um, and then the problem is, if we give too much space for loading, then then we reduce parking for pedestrians. I mean, there's so many people 
down there, you know, jockeying for spots. Uh, and it's, it's tough. You know, if, if we were all urban planners and we were to lay out the downtown, we would have a completely different sketch, right? You'd have deliveries and trash in the back. And uh, it's just, it's, it's not ideal uh, because any space you take away, you know, the handicap spaces are dictated that, you know, there's a formula there. Uh, that's why it, it, in the locust lot, there's eight or nine handicap spaces because there's an actual formula. And same with downtown. I believe there is a sort of formula. And when we get Tiger, uh, Tiger, you know, uh, is in a conservation meeting, but and he can enlighten us into what the what the state mandated formula is for handicap spaces and, and all the rest. Um, and, you know, loading and all that. And I agree. I wish there was a better place for, for trucks to be all day. You know, a, a town like Greenwich only allows delivery early in the morning. You know, that's, that's an ordinance for them. And, um, you know, other towns, uh, you know, don't have that. And, and we certainly feel that mid in the midday, it is crunch downtown. So not to mention pedestrians um, and, and Amazon drivers and UPS and FedEx and liquor trucks. And, you know, it's 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 tight down there. It's and tight are they down. all double parking? Yeah. They literally, because I work right above the movie theater and it is, you know, I see them all day long. Um, and we had to put the 25 foot zone around the crosswalks in front of Bank of America uh, and the Playhouse. And what's happened is now people are using those as double parking and loading zones, um, which it actually makes the space, it, it was safer when there was just a car parked there that would come and go every two hours. Uh, and now people, and that's why Tiger's going to um, build curbing out there. So you, you have the space that's state mandated and then, but you're not gonna have people uh, pull into those spaces because it does make it dangerous around the crosswalk. Um, so right. yeah, there, there are many masters downtown for sure. Any other thoughts? It's the tough uh, part. Everyone wants the cute, you know, downtown and it's very quaint and very beautiful. And we're, you know, it's a really special part of New Canaan. You know, other towns have more strip malls or more, you know, Route 1 or, you know, different things. So it's kind of like you got you got to give and take a little bit to have it. Now, right. I do think there's things, you know, we've talked about a lot of things that can be done and that are in the process. But um, I mean, the picture, this guy is standing in front of the handicapped parking sign. <laughs> right. Um, so, right. so to, to, yeah, okay, well, let's no, vote on ahead. this and then I, no, I, I'm just referring to the hydrant thing. I, I, what I was saying was that there was not a yellow mark on the curb. And again, everywhere else I've been in the country, the curbs are painted too. So this is the bugaboo of mine. And if we restripe Main Street, it would be nice to get blue on the curb, um, as opposed to just on the street. Anyway. On our beautiful here, granite there. curbs. Yeah, <laughs> really. That's what I don't care. Too. I don't care. Maybe we could put a sticker on it or something. You know, that's like yeah. maybe that's a better use of a of a decal because it won't get yeah. as much salt. The Belgian block that destroy tires. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Drew, you got oh, a lot of it too. I, I don't don't know. Know. <laughs> tires on that on that granite. Um. All right, All right, let's vote on Mr. Gill's ticket. Who votes to uphold that ticket? This is the truck. This is the truck. Oh, to uphold. This is the right. truck. Uphold. All right. Sorry, I gotta keep on. Yeah. That that's I'm, I'm watching you, Nancy. Don't worry. Okay, okay good. <laughs> All right. And then the next one is Courtney Hackett. I believe that's on the exact same space. Um, let's see. All right, let me look at the picture again, refresh my memory. Yeah, you see a blue line where she is. Yeah. And she said she saw a blue line. Right. Yeah. Now, is it true that the car in front of her is. Hi, I'm also still on the zone? Call you later. Okay. Yeah, see that. So there's right. double park. So she's half in the no parking zone and then in the in the handicapped. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. 
and the car in the front had a permit. It did? Yes. Okay. Any other thoughts? Uh, all right, all, who would, uh, who wants to vote to uphold this ticket? I will. Okay. And to veto? Okay, so that's four to one. Okay. Uh, I think, is that it, right? That's everything we got? But just uh, just one item, and I don't want to yep. keep you guys yeah, yeah. any longer than, than we don't want to get out of here, but I, I'm just noticing on the tickets themselves, there's a warning, you know, the double the fine within 14 days after issued. That seems pretty tight. And I just wondered if that's set in stone because the way the mail is, the way, you know, the economy isn't quite back. Uh, people are, are getting getting this like a week in and then they've got a week to respond. That's pretty, that's pretty well, uh, draconian. For, first of all, when they go in an appeal process, the ticket, is, the 14, the clock stops ticking. Right, but they, I'm saying in, in practicality, they probably have a week to respond before the fine doubles. Or if you're saying even if, the, if the, after the 14 days, if they appeal, then they're they still back to, to zero? They have to appeal first within 10 days. So if they want to appeal a ticket, it has to be appealed within 10 days from the date of issuance. It's 14 business days, so it doesn't count the okay. weekends. And then, yes, you know, we absolutely realize that, you know, the mail is late. If we see a check that's written a few days before the 14th day, and then it gets there a few days after the 14th day, we give a little bit of leeway. Yes. Right. Good. Okay. Good. I'm curious, just uh, Stacy, um, yeah. what would you say your percentage of ticket pay payments are uh, via check versus online these days? Oh, um, uh, oof. I'm going to say that the majority of people are starting to pay their tickets online. I'm seeing less, um, actually, since the pandemic, less through checks and in person than through online. I can't give you an actual percentage, sure. but yeah. we'll say that it's increasing. The online is increasing. So even do you think it's like 50 50 or is it more online? I'm going to say it's more online. Uh, I, I would go as high as uh, 60, 40, maybe. Um, and and they, that include, you know, and they, they are willing to pay the convenience fee. So, you know, that, yeah, that's that turning point. Don't get, me, don't get me started on that one. <laughs> Believe me, I've tried to get it reduced. And unfortunately, um, Crazy. that's, that's out of because of the credit card uh, yeah. sort of passing yeah. through yeah. the yeah, the, the credit card fees. Stacy, are there? Uh, this is the state passed that we have to put sales tax on all of. Yeah, believe it or not, on uh, on all parking meters, all parking permits, right. um, and I think we, the town, eat the the meter sales tax. Right oh. now we do, yes. Right now yeah. we do, and yeah. but the the consumer pays the the residents pay the tax on the the permits. The residents and the businesses and the businesses yeah. pay the yes. tax on the permits. Correct. Are we do we have to pay tax on the tickets? No. Okay. No, it's it's uh I forgot how it's worded, but it only has to do with the parking aspect of it okay uh, yeah not the but not the tickets not the tickets okay um okay well next month we'll vote on uh if we're gonna number one renew the employee free permits and if we should do it for six months or a year so be thinking about that uh tiger will try to join us next week and give us all an education on uh road striping uh, I think we're all interested in that and what, how that's scheduled um, and, and all that. So that'll be good. Uh, and then talk to us about Elm Street. And I don't know if the main, once again, the, the street stuff is all police commission. So uh, I'll learn a little bit more. Uh, I'll sit in for part of that uh, next, next month. So. Are we uh, all supposed to be there next week? I may, I may have missed that. No, no, no. That's just I'm going to go to police commission and oh, open oh. up this discussion about the 15th. No, no, no. 
You okay. guys don't. And then uh, the carriage barn is requesting something for the pop-up park. So I'll sit in on that uh, just, you know, just to hear and listen uh, and all that. And then I'll report back to you. You Super. do not, you do not have to be there at all. Thank you. So, um, okay. So it is, let's get the exact time here. 747. Uh, uh, I think we have to vote. Uh, someone want to vote to adjourn the meeting? I'll move. All right, Nancy, motion, whatever. And, uh, Drew, would you like to second that? Yes, I will. All right. There we go. All right, everybody. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Great. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.